a small island, it's hard to get 22 players keen to come up every Sunday morning when it's raining and blowing 50 mile an hour. You, you come up in the mornings and someone will drive off in a car and come back with three more people that look like they've just woken up. Football on the Isle of Scilly is very different to any other football. It's not quite like playing in Champions League. But it's not actually an official league. You've got a ref who turns every week. It's always sad to teams, but you know. Hey, Ad, get your boots on, mate. Well, I meant life complicated. <laughs> Me and my colleagues here were pretty much vampires at the minute. We did, we did night shift in the cop. So yeah, we, we start at 10 o'clock, finish at six, and I got to be up the pitch at like half past nine, so I don't get any sleep. I have some breakfast and maybe a beer. Um, and then go straight to football, play football, and then go to the pub. I'm the chairman of the Alder City Football League. I said, well, we are the world's smallest league. Technically speaking, we've got two teams. I tried to get into the Guinness World Records, but they, they weren't having it. It started in, back in the 1910s. It used to be all five islands uh, with the Inter-Island Cup. That lasted about till the 50s, uh, when it was just St Mary's uh, with the two teams. They were the Rovers and the Rangers. And then back in the 90s, it changed to the Garrison Gunners and the Warpark Wanderers, and it's gone from there ever since. Born and raised here, yeah, all, all my life. My dad used to be a fisherman, my granddad was a fisherman, and uh, my great uncle was a fisherman, so I've always had it in my family and I've always liked it since I was a kid. The weather does affect us a lot, really. Some days you can go out and you won't make a penny, and, and that can happen for weeks. In the summertime, it's the uh, islands double or triple in size because of tourists, and basically everybody lives off tourism on the islands. Some people really like the summer because it's busy and a bit more lively, but then a lot of us like the winter when it's a bit more chilled out. I just like it all year round, to be honest. It's just a nice place to live. Yeah, so crime on a whole, I think it is the safest place to live in the UK. So you get small, you know, very tight communities all over the place. The difference being here is there's that tight community, but you're you know, all locked together and, you know, certainly there are times in the winter where, you know, the planes aren't flying and there's no boat coming in and it's very much that feeling of, you're, you know, you're stuck here. It's a team of four of us. Logistically, it makes things quite challenging. We're just getting around, you know, having to get boats to, to jobs rather than getting in a car. You know, if something happens, normally, by the time we know about it or we're told about it, there's already people talking about it. You know, so everybody sort of knows what's going on. You just take the job on like a two to three year posting. After three years, you go back to the mainland. And I think that's really because you are very much ingrained in the community while you're here. Ultimately, I'm here as a police officer, but I still live here, so I'm going to go out and socialise. I'm going to be out working, you know, do my shopping, you know, going to the gym, going to the pub, going to play football. So you're going to see those same people. get some weird scores up here like it was the first time in probably a year that just a 1-0 it's normally like a 5-4 or a, a 6-3 or something like that. The standard's pretty good actually I say we get quite a few uh, touring teams coming over I can't remember actually the last time we actually lost to a mainland team so and it's like anything I mean I personally if I do something I want to win don't get me wrong I'm not going to go out and get really stuck into people you still get a few little tough tackles you get there's a few bookings the odd sending off at the start of the season, goal yard rules. So you get all the players in one list and you get the two captains sat down over a point. Pick your keepers, pick your defenders, pick your midfielders, pick your strikers. If you pick last, then you are the worst player. So That's all we're trying to do, make it as fair as possible. So it's a good game every Sunday. It's rarely worked. Get rabbits up there digging holes everywhere. Uh, it can be if someone stands and breaks their ankle. That's happened a couple of times. But we normally try and get them all filled in before the game. Here now on Silly for 15 years when I took over the retirement, what was then called the uh, Vauxhall Conference League, I think it's the Van Rama now. I never made it to the top, there you go. Uh, many are called but few are chosen. 
It'll be very close, I think, because what was going to be a runaway league win for the black team, the team in black, then uh, the Reds are putting some fight back into it. Telling people you play for the world's smallest football league is it is something a lot of people take quite a lot of pride in, I think. Like ever since I can remember I've always loved football. Everything I do really is based around football, everything I think about is to do with football. And that's the same for a lot of kids my age and a lot of people I play football with. My name is Will St. Pierre, I play for the Garrison Gunners and I'm a goalkeeper. There's 18 people in my year. I mean, you can't even get a full side of football there. We've got a secondary school, so we've got nursery up until year 11. And then from there, you have to move to the mainland to do further education. And then you've got to find either host family or stay at boarding school. A lot of people want to leave the islands at this age and just go and experience more things. A lot of us played since we're little boys. We know each other really well. It makes it unique, it makes it different, and it makes it enjoyable because you, you know you play it every week. Maintaining place is probably the hardest thing because you can play in the league when you're 14, but once you get to 16, obviously they have to move the mainland. So we lose a big chunk of our youth. Very rarely people actually come back. I go over a couple of times a month, a lot more than most people because I go and play football on the mainland. I play for Helston, side in Cornwall. Helston's first team, they play you know, semi-professional football, they play some really good football. I mean, I've, I've not always been the greatest, but I mean, I've always tried to kick a football about. It's still like a dying dream of still wanting to be a professional footballer, like most kids my age do have that. I, I just kind of want to you know, get as far as I can and make as good memories as possible. I couldn't say what type of person you need to be, but you got to like it immediately. I, I knew a guy um, what used to work with, he might say work with, he was there for half a day. I was like, I love it, I've been there for 14 years now, so. There's people who've worked here and then they've got to the end of their term and thought, you know, I don't want to leave, and they've left the police rather than leaving the island. I, I will always come back, but it'll be, it'll be a sad time when I have to go. My brother, his year were the first year to go away and move to the mainland to, for college reasons and education because at that time it was made, well, you had to, legally. Like, we're not used to things like crime and we don't have to worry about locking our doors. So when we move to the mainland, it's going to be a bit of a shock, but, you know, everyone my age is excited about it. But, you know, no matter who you are, you, you overthink it and, you know, you don't think about, like, over, there's no traffic lights, you know. We don't, when we move to the mainland, yeah, we've got so much more to think about. Yeah. But uh, no, it, it, everyone's excited.